Welcome to this episode of the Sports Detective Podcast Show. My name is James Williams, and today we are talking about if it is time for the Los Angeles Lakers to make a panic trade. Why are we talking about this? Well, last night the Los Angeles Lakers got absolutely demolished at home by the Brooklyn Nets in the second half to fall under 500 once again this season. And as many things happen with LeBron teams and the Lakers teams, rumors have been circulating on who they should acquire, who they shouldn't acquire, who should be traded, who should stay. And we are going to talk about that today because I think I have actually thought about it a little bit and I think I know what the Lakers should do or what they should at least try to do. And I believe that um, person that they should try to acquire, I was, okay, let me let me take a step back before I kind of get into who they think they should acquire. Um, the reason... I, you know, have always been kind of hesitant on the Lakers trying to make a move is because when you act like like people want to like make fun of the bubble title and all that stuff. Guys, that title wasn't a fluke. They had the second best record throughout the regular season until the season got, um, you know, delayed due to covid The uh, LeBron was second in MVP voting that year. He had double digit assists. He led the NBA in assist. Anthony Davis was awesome and healthy that entire year. They had an arsenal of guards on that team that could spread the floor, create a little bit and hit open shots. Um, they had a, you know, a variety of forwards and big men along to go with LeBron at the forward spot. They had Marquise Morris at Kyle Kuzma um, at the big guy spot. Again, you know, diminish how important they were to those teams. And obviously they, you wouldn't play them in crunch time, but I think having just JaVale McGee and Dwight Howard, you know, on the floor for like 24 minutes to kind of alleviate some of that, like, big man pressure off Davis and to have rim protection on the floor, you know, for 48 minutes a game. I think that was very, very important for the Lakers in that title run. And basically they gave up um, a bunch of their depth for Russell Westbrook. And then they've been basically trying to like tread water and recover from that ever since. So I've always been kind of hesitant of the Lakers. Like, Hey, give up all this stuff for a Zach Levine or give up all of this stuff up for a Kyrie Irving. Well, with all of that being said, I actually think, that um, they should go after DeJounte Murray. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a, um, a clip here by from Sham Sharania about a month ago, and he kind of breaks down that, hey, DeJounte Murray is going to be a trade tar- target for the Lakers, and here's why. So we'll kind of let um, – we'll show you this clip here from Sean's on their um, his FanDuel TV show, and then we'll kind of talk about it afterwards, and I'll show you kind of what the Lakers package is right now for DeJounte Murray, because they're clearly in trade talks if you've been following the news today. So we'll go ahead and play this clip here, and then we'll talk about it afterwards. The Lakers front office has shown they're going to do their due diligence around the league. Zach Levine is a player we've talked about for weeks as a player that they're going to express interest in. He has to get back on the court, though. He's been sidelined. The hope is that he's going to be back at some point in January. He's got to show that he's going to be back on the court. One more player to keep an eye on, I'm told, a potential target for the Lakers, Hawks guard DeJounte Murray. Levine is in the second year of a $215 million deal. DeJounte Murray it still has four years, $120 million of an extension that kicks in next season. So that's a, a little bit better when you think about a reasonable salary to be bringing in when you already have LeBron James and Anthony Davis on your books. The Hawks' direction, of course, it's in flux. They gave up multiple first-round picks, a swap to go get DeJounte Murray a, a couple summers ago from the Spurs. So when you look at the Lakers' asset pool, they have one first-round pick they can trade now, or they could wait until draft time, and they'll have three first-round picks to trade. So any deal that, that the Lakers want to pursue for a star player is going to most likely have to, you know, include the names of guys like Austin Reeves, Max Christie. That's who teams will want. The Lakers obviously have shown no inclination of moving Austin Reeves, don't want to move Austin Reeves, but those are the types of players that teams will ask for. And if you're the Lakers, you, you like Lou said, they have to figure out the rotations, but you probably feel like the talent might be there. This is the same group for the most part that made to the Western Conference Finals last year. Darvin Ham is clearly searching for answers when it comes to rotation, and he still has yet to find it. And I think we're still a few weeks out from the entire roster. Rui Hachimura, Austin Reeves from being all right, so there you have it, guys. Um, Shams kind of broke that down. The important thing there about the end, though, where he said, like, hey, we, we're still a few weeks for them, you know, to be trade eligible. If you signed your contract or extension in the offseason, you couldn't be eligible for trades until January 15th. Well, I'm recording this to January 20th right now. So all of a sudden, this information is kind of, kind of starting to be very, very relevant. Um, he made a few points there about DeJounte Murray. First off, and this is the reason why I think the Lakers, if they could get him, um, they, they should try to get him is because of that contract. And I'll go ahead and show you uh, his contract here right now, because when you compare it to other stars or players that they could eventually trade for, or potentially trade for, I should say, um, 
DeJounte Murray's is actually, his contract is actually very, very fair for what he could give you. So here we go. I have the uh, Atlanta Hawks payroll here on the screen right now. As you can see, DeJounte Murray right now is currently the fifth highest paid Hawk. <laughs> That's freaking crazy. Like, Trey Young obviously making a lot of money, and then uh, these three guys ahead of him, Capella, Hunter, Bogdanovich, are just a slightly more expensive than him. Obviously, he signed an extension, so that money does kick up. But if you're talking about $25 million for a, a third guy on your team, that's that's a pretty dang good price for that. And then you got 27 29 31 So if you're talking about DeJounte Murray as an asset right now, since he got traded to the Hawks, he has very much diminished as an asset. Um why is that? Well, kind of the idea of like um, when the Hawks traded for him, it's like, well, we need defense around Trey Young. And DeJounte Murray was kind of looked at like this very much, you know, versatile two way guard. The only problem is if you're a versatile like guard that was like, you know, like the year before DeJounte Murray got traded to the Hawks, guys, DeJounte Murray averaged 21, 9, and 8. That nine is nine assists. So if you're a person that goes from averaging 20 points a game and nine assists, so you're producing like close to like 40 points a game, um, probably for like per game. And then all of a sudden they're asking you like, hey, you have to play this defensive role and this kind of like guy that plays off of Trey Young. That's kind of like a not as appealing, you know, scenario. And it's just been an awful marriage ever since the start. They've changed head coaches in Atlanta. Things just aren't going right there. And all of a sudden that haul that Shams said, um, that the Hawks actually gave up for Trey Young, all of a sudden they're not going to get that back. They are not going to get that back. They are not going to get um, multiple first round picks. Well, they might get like two. I think I'd be I'd be very much shocked if the Hawks were able to get three or more first round picks because you know too when they traded for Jonte Murray, he just made his first All Star game. He was um, a few years younger than he is right now, and um, he he was a lot cheaper as a contract. So there's a lot of reasons like why his now now it isn't like, you know, Westbrook leaving the Lakers level diminished where you have to attach stuff to DeJounte Murray to uh, move off of him. But right now his value has very much decreased and it's going to kind of depend here where the Hawks are going to, um, you know, have to like kind of gauge what they can get for him. And right now and this is where the, the problems start for the Lakers. So, so good news for the Lakers his contract, DeJounte Murray's contract, is not um, so, you know, crazy that you have to give up, like, a bunch of stuff for him. A bunch of, you have to give up, like, you know, um, like, the Russell contract, the Vanderbilt contract, the Rui contract. the Re Like, you don't have to give up that. You have to basically give up one contract and then maybe a little bit of something else. Um, so that's the good news for the Lakers, because they could potentially make a trade for DeJounte Murray. And that's why I think this is a, would be a very, very smart move for them. They could trade for DeJounte Murray, and then they also, depending on what they give up for that, they could also flip some of their other pieces for maybe better fitting role players. Because, guys, Ru Ruby's been, I don't want to say he's been bad, but he's kind of a guy that, like, like when he play because I watch a lot of Lakers, and, like, when Rui comes on the court, it's like, oh, he's back from injury. And then you kind of look at his stats, like, oh, he's actually played a, like three quarters of the season. <laughs> like they haven't been able to figure out Rui. They haven't been able to figure out Vanderbilt. The guard wrote Gabe Vincent being hurt has really just kind of threw a wrench in their guards where they don't, where they don't really know how to play their guards. They really want to play two guards. It's Russell and Reeves. Um, as we've kind of heard about the reports of the Lakers too, they very much do not want to give up Austin Reeves. They do not want to give up Austin Reeves whatsoever. And the problem even too with trading Austin Reeves is, um, Actually, you know what? We'll kind of get into that. I'll um go ahead here and I'll show you this hoops hype thing. Um, that is basically the Atlanta Hawks like rumor mill, and we're gonna kind of like go through some of this stuff. I have this working right now, basically chronologically. So this was like um a few days ago, and basically, as you can kind of see on the screen here, um, the package that the um the Lakers are trying to sell, uh, you know, to get Dejounte Murray is D'Angelo Russell, it's Jalen hood Shafino, and it's a first-round pick. That is what is basically on the table right now. The only problem with that with the Hawks is you already have Trey Young. You don't want D'Angelo Russell back. You, you don't want him back. So the Lakers' um, uh, you know, problem here, too, as you can kind of see right here, um, any framework for the John T. Murray trade to the Lakers would likely involve D'Angelo Russell. 
uh, league sources told Hoops Hype. However, that would be contingent on Russell being flipped to a third team from Atlanta in the process. So you're basically trying to figure out a third way tra- three way trade here. And then you're also trying to find a home for D'Angelo Russell, which guys, D'Angelo Russell does not have the highest amount of trade value right now. So that is a other kind of um, concern that the Lakers have here. And we'll kind of scroll up here um, and we'll kind of get to that trade package that I uh, was telling you about earlier. So this is basically the rumored offer right now on the table. They're going to tra- try and trade D'Angelo Russell, Hood Shafino, and the Lakers 2029 first round pick for DeJounte Murray. Um, so that's basically like the offer right now. And kind of the question right now with the Lakers is, um, is anyone else going to come out there and match that? Is anyone else going to come out of the woodwork and be like, all right, you know what? Screw it. We think we can make a title run right now. We'll give up two first for Jante, and then we'll give you the contracts and stuff. Or maybe we'll give you better pieces that actually fit on your team. We don't have to complicate things and get a third team. Some of these teams that I think I've kind of circled down here, um, because there was um, some rumors the other day where Chris Haynes reported that the Bucks are interested in DeJounte Murray, which I don't think the one, the Bucks have less assets than the Lakers. And two, the, um, um, I, I don't, if I want, if I want DeJounte Murray and I want the best version of DeJounte Murray, I want him as like the number one lead guard because we just saw it here with Trey Young. Now, Trey Young's a different scenario than like, um, playing next to Dame Lillard or other guards in the NBA, but I want him to kind of be the number one lead guard. Um, I don't want another like player that's very much dependent on having the ball in his hands and can't play off the ball next to him. And Damian Lillard, I think kind of like, you know, institutes that not as severely as Trey Young, but I think it is kind of like a a little bit of a similar situation. So I have a few teams here that I think could possibly target to John Timmer. Let's just start out in the West. We already have the Lakers. The New Orleans Pelicans are interesting to me because they have all of these assets that they have acquired from trading Anthony Davis, um, you know, you know, just kind of like building in the draft the last few years because they've they've actually kind of used a lot of these Lakers picks. That's how they got Dyson Daniels. They have young talent and they have all their draft picks. They have a lot of assets that they could move for another player. You know, that could be moves around the margins. That could be a move for DeJounte Murray. And this would actually be a relatively easy kind of like transition, I think, for New Orleans. Because basically you could, now again, they're, they're in a similar situation to the Lakers where the person I'm about to mention in this trade, potentially, they would have to um, flip him to a third team, probably. And I think if you kind of look at the numbers, CJ McCollum's numbers this season are very much similar to DeJounte Murray's. Their money's around the same, and DeJounte Murray's a lot younger than CJ McCollum. If you could attach two first-round picks and CJ McCollum for DeJounte Murray, maybe you have to add a young player or something, too, to that to kind of entice things for... Atlanta, I would do that if I was the Pelicans. I, I think, you know, they're like a top five seed right now in the West. Getting to John Tay Murray, it, it might not push you over the top, but all of a sudden it gives you another kind of like, you know, um, a weapon that you can use in a series against OKC or Minnesota, or it's a guy that you can like kind of throw at Jamal Murray in a series, or it's a guy that Jamal Murray in a series against Denver would have to guard and have to like try and, you know, you know, they're, or I guess KCP would probably guard him in that scenario, but I think that would be an interesting move. I thought about Utah because they have all those assets too, but Colin Sexton's playing really well for them right now, and I don't know if they would want to like, you know, I, I I'm curious to see what Utah is going to be. I don't know if John, Dejounte Murray would be a piece for them, but that's an option I thought there. Um, the other option too would be the team that um um he was drafted to and spent the first part of his career for and that would be the spurs so basically the spurs package would possibly be just sending back the draft picks that atlanta originally sent them and then they just get dejounte murray back who you have dejounte murray who is a you know actually a guard versus it being just Wembenyama and like all of the forwards so that's another likely scenario but you get over to the eastern conference there's a few other teams that i think could potentially try to make a move again when I'm again, you guys could you're probably yelling at me in the comments right now. There are other teams that could potentially trade for DeJounte Murray. There's other teams that are rumored for him. If I want DeJounte Murray, I want him to be a lead guard. So I don't think the Knicks would be that smart of an option. However, I do think the Brooklyn Nets could be. I think the Brooklyn Nets could be. They could get um 
you know, they, they have plenty of trade assets that they could use. They have plenty of contracts. You can maybe give them um, Dorian Finney-Smith because I think the Hawks are looking for kind of more versatile wings rather than other like lead guards. And then if you're Brooklyn, you can convince yourself like, hey, we have um, Cam Johnson, we have Mikael Bridges, and now we have DeJounte Murray. And then maybe we're a piece of two away for actually being contenders again in the East. I, I'm just I'm just making the case there that maybe they could be a, a target because they, they seem like they're active in the the trade scenario when there's Donovan Mitchell stuff floating around. Brooklyn always seems to be a name. Um, there was Dame stuff over the summer. They seem to be a name for that. So I, I like keep your eye out on Brooklyn for that. Another team would be Orlando. Orlando and I had um you know a guest on that covers the Magic uh, about a month ago, and we were talking about this, and I kind of made that case to him, and he kind of agreed with me. Where it's like Orlando has basically since they pulled off that Vucevic trade, they've had multiple lottery picks. And they have a lot of key foundational pieces in their rotation right now. They got Paulo, they got Franz, they really like Wendell Carter. There's guys like um, um, Anthony Black, they have um, Jalen Suggs, but then they also have guys like Cole Anthony. It seems like they have like too many good players and they could be a team that could like maybe give up multiple good players for like a legit star or a legit guy that's potentially a star, or a legit guy that's like, you know, can go to toe, if you play a series against the Knicks, can go toe-to-toe with Jalen Brunson, or can go toe-to-toe with Tyrese Maxey, or go toe-to-toe with Damian Lillard in the East, or go toe-to-toe with Derek White, Drew Holiday, that combo in the East. And Orlando, or Halliburton, is another guard in the East, obviously. Um, And Orlando, could they give up maybe a pick or two? And then a few of their kind of young pieces, they have that Jonathan Isaac contract they could get off of. They could get rid of Fultz if they wanted to. Again, maybe two if they're giving up a big contract that's a guard. Maybe there's a third team involved. So a lot of these seem to be very complicated because it all kind of depends to what Atlanta wants in a deal. Um, So that's another team. The other team, too, here that I think would be very, 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 very interesting in this scenario here. We know very much that the... uh, well, that team obviously is the Miami Heat. We know very, very much that the Miami Heat were trying to get Damian Lillard. We know that they might be interested in Donovan Mitchell. Why wouldn't you be interested in DeJounte Murray? Why wouldn't you? He's um, younger than Damian Lillard. He's better defensively. Not the offensive player, obviously, but his contract is way cheaper. He's, it's way, way cheaper, guys. Like, I showed you that that thing on the screen there, like the, the worst his contract gets is like in five years, it's 30 million. He's got a $30 million player option comparison. It was the 27, 28 season that that uh, player option happens. Um, comparison to that $30 million player option, Anthony Davis's player option that same season is $70 million. So that DeJounte Murray player option, like five years from now is nothing to sweat about. Um, obviously, you know, injuries can happen. If he gets an injury, then, you know, everything's off the table, but I think that the Heat, you know, again, you, it's kind of weird trading within the conference because then you have to play them four times a year. If the Hawks actually figure things out, they, um, they, you know, um, would probably have to play the Heat in a playoff series. Again, what would be the Heat's uh, asset to him? Because in all those Damian Lillard trades, it was, um, it was Tyler Hero. I don't think you want Tyler Hero and and Trey Young being necessarily paired together. So again, maybe that's another third team option. But if you're telling me if you get to Jonte Murray in that heat system next to Butler and Spolstra and Bam and Hami Hawkes now, I, I absolutely love that. I think that would be an absolutely home run trade for the Miami Heat if they're able to execute that. Um, again, there's other teams that might be able to want to pull the trigger, like the Bucks we've heard have been kind of floating around there. Um the Knicks, obviously, they've been kind of floating around a lot of different stars, too. They just traded for Ananobi, but kind of getting my big picture thing here. And then there's basically this overarching thing, if you're the Lakers, guys, is um, do you give up Austin Reeves in this trade? Because it's kind of like if you're the Lakers, you're thinking about like, all right, if we're able, if you're basically able to execute that package that we were talking about earlier, where it's Russell, Hood Shafino, and that pick. Then you're talking about a five-man lineup where it could be Murray, Reeves, Torian Prince, or Jared Vanderbilt, or whatever you know, other wing you want, LeBron and Davis. That's a pretty good five. That's a pretty good five. And I think, too, if you make Austin Reeves your like fourth or fifth option, I actually think that makes him a lot more efficient because he actually has been 
struggling a lot this year. So if the Lakers are able to execute that, that that's perfect. I have no notes on that trade. However, this is where things get complicated because how badly do you want him? How badly do you want him? How badly? Because if you want him very, very badly and you want to ensure that maybe LeBron re-signs in the offseason, which again, that's a d- whole different kind of can of worms because he's like going to be like 40 next year. Um, or next season, I should say. But how badly do you want him? <sighs> I contemplate giving up Reeves. I would really would. Uh, that gets a little tricky because Reeves' contract is um, more backloaded. So you would have to attach like another small contract to that. So you'd maybe have to do, I think the money would work if you did it this way. You'd have to do Vanderbilt and Reeves or like Prince and Reeves. It would basically have to be like Reeves and then another like contract that's like, um, you know, five to like eight million kind of in that range because his contract's like 12 million. That is not enough to do just like a flat out swap. Um, and even if you attach Hood Shafino and his contract, for example, that's still not enough to do a swap, I'm pretty sure. So you'd have to attach something else to that. Um, the other question would be, too, could you potentially attach Reeves, Rui, and then you go back to the Hawks and you'd be like, all right, we'll give you Reeves and Rui because you want Reeves, and you give us Murray, and we get Sadiq back. Because then the money would match up on that, too. Because that's the thing, too. I think a lot of people, when they do these NBA trades and these fake trades, I think a lot of people don't think about how the money works. And that's why I'm trying to figure out this stuff and how the money works here. Because that's that's kind of the weird, hard and weird thing with, with Murray, where it's like his money's so low that it's like he's got an attractive like contract and people want to trade for him. But a lot of these teams that are trying to trade for him, it's like they either have like way too small contracts that are trying to trade for him or they have way too big of contracts where they're trying to trade for him. So there's kind of like a whole weird different can of worms that we're opening up here. But I'm t- and, and then too, if you could get, for example, with the Reeves thing, if you were to give up Reeves, the bright side of that, the way to look at it, because obviously you don't want to lose Austin Reeves, even though he has necessarily, like he's been all right, but he hasn't necessarily, um, you know, had the best season so far. Um, the bright side of that though, is if you give up Reeves, you still have, Hood Shafino is an asset. You still have a Rui and a D'Angelo Russell contract as assets. And could you talk yourself into this? Could you potentially talk yourself into, um, you know, combining some of that stuff or doing separate trades? And basically, if you get to, if you give up Reeves, obviously, you give up Reeves, but you keep some of your assets, you combine the other contracts that you have, and then you can flip that for other pieces. So, after I kind of thought about it that way, I'm a little bit more open to trading Austin Reeves right now. So, um, yeah, that that's basically it. I think that's going to do it for this episode today. I, I think the Lakers should try to try all they can right now to get DeJounte Murray because he's 27 years old. He's under contract for the next five years. It's a reasonable contract. And even if you are giving up like that draft pick for him, like you're going to have him potentially for another five years. And even if LeBron retires two years from now, three years from now, um, you still have a Jonte Murray, Anthony Davis nucleus that you can kind of work and build around around the edges for the, you know, the rest of the 2020s or at least into the, you know, into the late 2020s. So there you have it, guys. That's kind of my thoughts on this trade. Let let me know what you think. Do you, do you think Jonte Murray's worth it to trade for the Lakers? Do you think they should try and make a move like that? Should the Lakers trade Pat? Should they try and basically try and put more role players versus a star player around Davis and LeBron? Um, you know, kind of give me your theories, give me your thoughts in the comment section. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, hit that like button. If you like content like this, NBA talk, different types of sports talk. We do NBA, NFL, college football, college basketball. I cover all of that stuff here on this feed. We kind of react to stories and kind of, you know, trades and dealings and stuff like this. Um, so if you like that content, hit that subscribe button. We've been doing this show for over three years now. We're just now starting to put content like this onto YouTube. So if you like that stuff, subscribing will really help us in the algorithm and really help the show. So thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you next time.